Okay. Um, so I just wanted to talk um, about a patient that I saw in the neuro ophthalmology clinic uh, with Dr. Katz. Uh, this is a patient that saw her physician <coughs> because of um, some migraines. And she was referred to neuro ophthalmology because during the exam she was told that her left optic nerve was swollen. Um, she's 14 years old. These migraines have been going on for about three years. And review of systems was uh, negative except for that whenever she had migraines, um, she would also get blurry vision. Uh, her past medical history and, and family history uh, were non-contributory. Um, on exam, um, almost everything was very normal. Um, her acuity, tonometry, um, there's no apparent pupillary defect. Um, visual fields and extraocular movements were, were full bilaterally. Um, external exam and slit lamp exam were also normal. normal. Um, the abnormalities, though, became apparent on the fundus exam. On the right eye, um, everything looked very normal. Um, in the left eye, though, um, there was some nasal uh, elevation of the optic disc, and there was um, what appeared to be some anomalous branching of the vessels within the optic disc. And so this um, is her right eye and left eye on uh, phonoscopic exam. And so you can see you know, a, a pretty normal looking uh, optic disc over here, and then some nasal elevation over here, um, and some asymmetry between in the, the vessel branching patterns between the left and right eye. And so the referring physician thought that she had papilledema from increased intracranial pressure. And so when looking at um, someone who might have papilledema or say an anomalous optic nerve, um, as far as symptoms go, if there's no other uh, disease process going on, um, the patient should be asymptomatic where someone has increased intracranial pressure. Um, almost all of them um, have headache. All, uh, some other very common symptoms are transient visual obscurations, um, full synchronous tinnitus, diplopia. Um, on exam, um, if someone has papilledema, um, they'll frequently have a central cup that is maintained throughout the disease until the disease becomes very chronic, very long-standing. Um, vessel branching pattern is, is normal in papilledema, whereas it's frequently is abnormal in someone with an anomalous optic nerve. Um, they may have loops, trifurcations, and just increased bran branching. Um, the optic nerve margins um, in papilledema frequently are blurred. And so if someone has you know, very clear, crisp um, optic nerve margins, it's unlikely that they have papilledema. Um, and so it's thought that this patient might have some kind of anomalous optic nerve. Um, so these are just some examples of different types of um, anomalous nerves compared with papilledema. Uh, morning glory, uh, congenital tilted optic nerve, uh, myelinated nerve fibers optic nerve hypoplasia, uh, optic nerve coloboma, and optic nerve drusen. And currently it's thought that this patient has um, bilateral optic nerve drusen. Um, and so further workup um, in a patient with a suspected um, optic nerve head drusen. Um, uh, B-mode uh, ultrasound scan um, is very good at showing the drusen. Um, because of scheduling and timing, um, that has not yet happen with the, this particular patient, although she is scheduled to have um, a B-scan ultrasound. Um, OCT can be used to quantify optic nerve swelling if there is any. Um, and it can op, um, identify some of the more superficial uh, optic nerve head drusen, but it doesn't penetrate um, as deep um, as some of the other imaging modalities. And so it's hard to see some of the deeper um, drusen or, or maybe the posterior uh, surface of any drusen. Um, autofluorescence, um, drusen are, are very positively autofluorescent. And so they typically show up on that. And then EDI OCT, um, in addition to identifying optic nerve drusen, because it penetrates deeper, um, you can see the structure of the drusen itself and see both the anterior and posterior surface um, of the optic nerve head drusen. And so um, this is just an example of uh, not the specific patient, but someone with optic nerve head drusen um, identified on B-scan ultrasound. And so you see the drusen right here with the, the shadow behind it, and the same thing over here. Um, again, we don't yet have uh, the results of this patient's ultrasound. Um, someone uh, with optic nerve head drusen uh, identified on autofluorescence. Um, pretty obvious, all of these bright spots right here um, are the optic nerve head drusen. Um, this patient's autofluorescent, um, definitely not as, as obvious 
Um, no, nothing nearly as obvious or, or apparent as, as in this example right here. Um, on the patient's right, there's these little areas of, of, of lightness right here that might be something, um, but definitely nothing you know, real definitive. Um, and this, this is an example of um, EDI OCT showing optic nerve head bruising on this mass right here. And so it'll ha be, um, you know, it'll be more, what's it, it'll, it'll be lighter, I guess, on, on the image. In this patient's uh, EDI OCT, um, the patient's right eye, the patient's left eye, um, no, nowhere near as obvious as that previous example. Um, here on the patient's left, you can see the tilting of the optic nerve. And you can see over here what might uh, look like some optic nerve head drusen. Um, and so we're waiting, again, for the ultrasound to, to confirm the suspected diagnosis. Um, and so assuming that this patient does, uh, in fact, have bilateral optic nerve head drusen and no other, you know, uh, intracranial or uh, ophthalmic pathology going on, um, we would continue to follow her. Uh, we would examine her uh, fundus at each visit and compare what it looks like, you know, in the present uh, visit with any previous visits and see if there's any changes. And then similar thing, we would continue to monitor her optic nerve function uh, with visual acuity, perimetry other tests of that sort and, and see if there's any changes, see if there's any deterioration that might point towards some kind of pathologic process going on that is starting to, to pick up. Um, and so that's that. Um, and I just want to uh, say thank you very much to everyone uh, as I rotate here. You've been very helpful and, and specifically um, Dr. Katz, Dr. Warner, Dr. Crum, and Dr. Jose uh, in neuro-ophthalmology have been very helpful and, and patient in explaining these things to me. And, um, yeah, what to do. Um, any, any questions about this patient?